Hey, I read somewhere that mathematicians can turn a sphere inside out. Yes, that's true. What's the big deal? Just poke a hole in it and pull it through. Sure, but the point is to do it without making a hole. But then it seems impossible. You're right. You cannot do it with an ordinary sphere. Like a basketball. You have to understand the rules of the game. This sphere is made of an abstract elastic material that can stretch and bend and pass through itself. But you cannot rip or puncture this material without destroying it. And you cannot crease it or bend it sharply. If the surface can pass through itself, what's the problem? Do you think allowing self-intersections makes it easy? Try it. Uh, alright, a bit passive-aggressive there, but I'll just push the two halves right through each other. Be careful. What about that ring around the equator? Remember, you mustn't tear or crease it. Ugh. Let me try again. That's no good either. You're pinching it infinitely tight. But then there's no way. It's impossible. You'd have to crease or pinch it to turn it inside out. It is surprising, but watch this. Is this it? Is this a sphere turning inside out? You bet. That wasn't easy to follow, was it? Well, actually it was, thanks to the helpful visual. What's not easy to follow is your condescending attitude. To figure out what's going on, let's look at something simpler. A circle. We'll build a vertical wall along the circle so that we can color the two sides differently. Can you gradually turn this circle into this other circle? Where the purple and gold sides are reversed without creating sharp corners? Of course. I can turn a rubber band inside out. Remember, we're really trying to turn the circle inside out. We only built the wall so we could see the different sides. Well, no shit. You just explained that this is an example to look at something simpler. All right, let me try. Watch out. That was a sharp bend. If we could make sharp bends in the material, we'd be able to turn any curve into any other by moving each point of the initial curve in a straight line toward a target point in the final curve. If I were able to sharply bend you, could we turn you into less of a bitch? <clears throat> Pulling a loop tighter and tighter is not really a gradual change. It's like having a corner in disguise. So it's against the rules. Well, if you can't have corners, and you can't pull loops tight, I think it's impossible to turn the circle inside out. Yes, you're right. Wait a minute. Am I supposed to believe you can turn a sphere inside out? But not a circle? Yes. There is something fundamental about curves that would have to change if you were to turn a circle inside out. And that something cannot change under our allowed motions. And what's that? I'll explain. Imagine a monorail atop the wall. Now the rule about monorail traffic is I know how a monorail works. Okay. Are we just going to keep pouting like this? Are you here to learn how to turn a sphere inside out? Or are you here to whine and cry? On this track, the car is always turning left. As it goes around the circle once, it makes one full turn toward the left. On a more complicated track, the car might sometimes be turning left. And sometimes right. But the net amount of turning after one complete circuit is always some number of full turns in one direction or the other. The number of full turns it makes toward the left is called the curve's turning number. Ah, uh, turning number, because it's turning, right. That's so clever. Did you come up with that yourself? For a curve where there is more turning toward the right than toward the left, the turning number is negative. Hey, and if there's no net turning, the turning number is zero. Right. I had a hard time following the net turning for this winding track. That's natural. 
But there's another oh, wait, way to- Oh wait, fucking excuse me. I forgot that you, the overlord of science and geometry, struggled to grasp how us pathetic mortals can have difficulty with this simple venture. Okay, are you going to behave? Or am I done teaching you how to turn a circle inside out for the day? If we find every spot where the track is facing due east, the track is curving away from us. Viewed from here, it looks like a smile. Ooh, smiles. Ooh, yeah, it's like I'm a four-year-old. At these places, the car would be turning left. At others, the track looks like a frown. Curving toward us, at these points, the car would be turning right. The net number of full turns increases when the car passes a smile and decreases when it passes a frown. Starting at zero. One. Two. Three. Four. Three. Two. And we finish with three. The turning number is the number of smiles minus the number of frowns. I see. The turning number measures happiness. <laughs> if you insist. So your turning number is probably deep in the negatives, huh? Now the nice thing about the turning number is that it remains the same when a curve changes according to our rules. Frowns and smiles can appear or disappear, but only in pairs that balance out. The number of smiles minus the number of frowns never changes. So a curve can only turn into another curve with the same turning number. Right. The turning number is the fundamental property I mentioned before. Now, what's the turning number for the two circles? Remember to use smiles and frowns to help you out. Do I have to? I can't just look at the curved shape in relation to the purple walls? Use the fucking smiles and frowns. <sighs> this one has one smile and no frowns, so the turning number is one. And if the goal is outside, one frown and no smiles, minus one. It makes sense. On one curve, you're turning left all the time. On the other, it's the opposite. It also makes sense immediately, if you're not a total fucking moron. Well then, I'm surprised you figured it out. So the reason you cannot turn a circle inside out... ...is because you're an uptight bitch. And also the turning number would change or something. But wait, doesn't the same argument prove that you can't turn a sphere inside out? This sphere has a three-dimensional smile. And this one has a three-dimensional frown. So they have different turning numbers. <laughs> of course, a dumb sack of shit like you would think that. Your analogy is childishly cute. But to make it complete, we must look at a general surface and consider all the points where it is horizontal and gold is on top. We'll draw horizontal stripes to make these points easier to locate. Smiles are like bowls curving up. Frowns are like domes curving down. Ah, and I suppose you're like gravity. Nothing but down. But there are other points where the surface is horizontal that are neither bowls nor domes. They are saddles and look like smiles from one direction and frowns from another. Near a bowl or a dome, the horizontal stripes form rings. Near a saddle, they form an X. Oh, you dumb bitch. Oh, you dumb, stupid bitch. I fucking got you now. Spheres don't have saddles. And your inability to grasp basic concepts is why I'm the one teaching you here. A dome and a saddle can come together and cancel out. Likewise, a bowl and a saddle can cancel out. But bowls and domes, like electrical charges of the same sign, normally don't get near each other. The unchanging number for surfaces then is this. Add domes and bowls, and subtract saddles. This number is one for the sphere, no matter which face is out. Okay, I'm willing to believe that turning numbers don't prevent the sphere from turning inside out. I would immediately believe it if anyone but you told me. But none of this means you can actually do it.
Well, again, someone else could probably do it, but you specifically never could. <laughs> oh, I know. I know it's so hard for you to see. I get it. You're trapped all alone with yourself inside that dumb, caveman-like brain of yours, rattling these concepts around in your skull back and forth, desperately, oh so desperately, trying to grasp something beyond the basic perception you have of this universe. You know there's concepts out there beyond what you can see. Math that calculates things above the numbers you can count on your fingers. You're aware of how much of the universe you don't know. And yet, you're trying. Trying so desperately hard to claim you can understand some of it. You don't need the answers to life's questions. You just need the ability to understand something above your current scope of daily life. Something. Anything. To make you sound smart. To let you tell yourself that you're aware of anything outside of the most mundane parts of your existence. You want something to remind you of the beauty and wonders of science. But it all comes crashing to a halt. Because you know you're not that smart. You're not able to easily grasp these things. You struggle and toil and try your damnedest to put these pieces together and join in on these conversations without any doubt in your mind that you know what you're talking about. And yet, you can't. Because things like this are just too difficult for someone like you. Fuck you. Steve Smail proved it was possible in theory in 1957. But it took seven years before Arnold Shapiro found a practical way to do it. Since the problem remained hard to visualize, more methods were invented later by Bernard Moran and several others. I'll show you Bill Thurston's method, invented in 1974. Let's go back to curves for a bit. Remember that this circle can only be changed into curves of turning number one. Have anything to add? No. No. Odd. Normally you have some sort of unhelpful, unfunny quip to say right now. Now, can the circle be turned into Still any- Still not allowing sharp corners, right? Of course. Now, can the circle be turned into any curve of turning number one? Say, this one? Let's see. I'll try to go backwards from this curve to the circle. I think I got it. There. Well done! Fairly slow compared to the average time spent on this problem, but your ability to actually solve it should be commended. Now, try this one. Man, this one may be a bit too tricky. It's all tangled up. Kind of like you are in that divorce. How's that going, by the way? You know, your divorce. Heard you might lose custody of your kid. Shame. Real shame. And this very easy one? We gave this example to a class of fourth graders, and they solved it in seconds. Whoa, you're not going to ask me to do every single curve of turning number one, are you? I would love nothing more than to waste your time with these pointless exercises. But unfortunately, I'm contractually obligated to try to teach you something. What we need is a general method. Do you remember the simple way to transform one curve to another? When sharp bends are allowed? Yes, you just go straight from one to the other. That's the one. When curves have the same turning number, this method can be adapted to work without sharp bends. The trick is to add waves to the curve. Can we do it on a simpler one? <laughs> I knew you would ask that. Oh my god, I want to slap you so badly. I swear to fuck, I want nothing more than to choke the fucking life out of you. I am so fucking done with we this. We start by marking small pieces of the curve that will serve as guides for the transformation. We move the centers of the guide segments straight toward their final destinations on the circle, without any rotation. Next, we rotate the guides so that they are lined up with the circle. And the waviness is how we move the parts in between. We make the connecting segments between adjacent guides bulge out into corrugations. What are you- This allows the segments to move freely around each other as long as they remain more or less parallel. Give me that! 
Hand that over right now, you cocky piece of shit. Taking my script like that, how dare you? Tricking the people at home into thinking you know what you're talking about? How dare you? Yeah, and I'll bet you wouldn't know jack shit about this either without that precious script. I wrote the script, you dick sneeze. I have a PhD in theoretical mathematics. This is my course. Where were we? Here is the transformation of the whole curve. The original curve in blue develops sharp corners, but the wavy curve is springy enough to remain smooth throughout. The same way your mattress was springy enough for me to fuck your brains out while your husband wasn't home. This isn't the time or place for this. We have to keep Then adjacent. when is the time? Where is the place? Come on. You're going through a messy divorce because after all this time, all these years, you still can't get enough of my disgusting caveman cock. I might not be as smart as you in your dumb fucking turning numbers, but I've got a PhD in plowing your shit inside out. Watch what happens when we try to turn a figure eight into a circle. I don't fucking care what happens when we try to turn a figure eight into a fucking circle. I don't give a flying fuck about avoiding sharp bends. Why are you avoiding me? Because what we did was wrong. It was wrong and I don't want to talk about it anymore. I just want to pretend it never happened. What was so wrong about it? You're in a loveless marriage. Your husband isn't that great of a guy. I'm pretty sure he was seeing women on the side anyway. So you finally decide to take charge for once in your life. Do something for yourself. Go for what makes you happy instead of desperately trying to piece what you have together into a puzzle that you can't possibly decipher. Look, things are messy because of the kid, and there's a lot of drama right now, but you can't deny what we had. I fucked it. No. I touched you in a way that you hadn't felt in over a decade. You can't deny it. I'm irresistible to you, and you're upset because what you think is a crisis over the end of your relationship is a crisis with your inability to cope with the fact that you are addicted to my dumb, uneducated, math-struggling Neanderthal cock. That's exactly why I'm upset, you fucking moron! This is not what a brother and sister are supposed to do! And who fucking cares if we're related? Do you think the scientists who learned how to turn a sphere inside out followed the rules? Fuck no. They threw everything they knew out the window and started experimenting, even if it was with their family members. Math is literally nothing but rules. Well, whatever. Christ. Rules were made to be broken. And you were made to be happy. No. No. I was happy. I was happy until you came back into my life. These little games we started as teenagers couldn't keep going. This vile, reprehensible shit had to stop. When I left, it wasn't because of fear for my feelings for you. It was because I wanted to distance myself from this mistake as much as I could. Go and lead a normal life. Mistake, huh? So there was nothing there? You know, your husband and I talked. We talked a lot. We weren't exactly friends, but we were very chummy. And you know what he told me once? No. He told me you screamed my name during sex. Stop. He told me you did it more than once. Fuck you. And he said you explained it was a bad habit you got from sharing a room with me for so many years growing up. And he thought nothing of it, but I think he knew. He knew something. He had to. It was so obvious. I mean, you react to these things without even thinking about it. I can see it now. You're running through all these taboo thoughts in your head on fucking replay. And there's a part of you deep down that loves it. That's not true. Hey, 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 hey. Listen. It's okay. I didn't come here to hurt you. I was never here to fight you. I don't give a shit about the money they're paying me for this, or the turning the spheres inside out, or who's right or who's wrong. I just wanted to get you back. 
Let's put all this petty bullshit aside for a minute and look at the facts. I'm here. Right now. And I'm willing to try to make this work. Whatever it takes. Moving away, fake names, whatever. It doesn't matter. We can make it work. We can always make it work. But you need to be honest with yourself. You can't deny these feelings. You're right. I've been lost for so long. I felt... empty. I always thought I could find comfort in the sciences. Everything makes sense in math and geometry and physics. And anything that doesn't, we can actually figure out. I dedicated my life to numbers because I knew they could never confuse me. But here I am, just confusing myself. Tricking myself into thinking I'm not already who I am. Man, fuck science! When, the, when was the last time you ever used science in your life? Life's all about feelings and what you feel. I, I know how I feel, and I have a pretty good idea I know how you feel. But think about it, when was the last time you ever used anything involving science? Who gives a shit? What, are you, what is science gonna get you a job in the science department? Of the science center? In the science building? Run by the scientists? No. Fucking Christ no. You know what your life's gonna devolve into? You're gonna care more about what fucking characters die in your favorite drama TV show and how much free fucking time you have to spend with your friends this weekend than anything that could ever happen in science. It doesn't matter. Science is completely irrelevant to anything. Who in the shit has ever even seen someone into science? Like real science. I don't mean when you're sharing fucking like social media posts about like pictures of science stuff like, oh, new star discovered and it's super bright. No, you think fucking no one cares about the actual science. The people who actually find that shit go down in history as big loser nobodies. Just get let go and follow your heart. Just let it all go. Yeah. Yeah, fuck science. That shit's for nerds. Turning a sphere inside out without poking a hole in it. What was I thinking? <laughs> That's impossible. You'd obviously have to pinch or crease it to turn it inside out. Yeah, now you're talking. Come on, let's get the fuck out of here, Oni-san. <laughs> so... Do you think we should tell Mom? <laughs> she already knows. What? How? Well, why do you think she and Dad have the same last name? Because they're married? You have a lot to learn about turning things outside in.